Hi, ladies and gentlemen, lovely listeners. I'm Caleb Lamte, your host for the Young and Old podcast. In this podcast, I interview some of Africa's top achievers across various disciplines all over the world. They share their habits, values, and principles that have brought them this far. Stay tuned and enjoy the conversation. I have on the show today Amponsa Obrema Ikeoko. Stage named OB Amponsa is a Ghanaian stand up comedian and an optometrist by profession. He is an award winning comedian who has performed on different events locally and internationally. He shares his journey on how he got into comedy and the lessons he has learned on the journey. You can follow him on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at OB Amponsa, the O B and A caps M P O N S A H. As he says, he's the one with the large following. Enjoy the conversation. So I'm here with um, Obi Amponsa. Yeah, I know his full name is Obrema Amponsa. Maybe I could be wrong. So <laughs> let, let me ask him. So Obi, you can tell us your full name so you can get to it. All right, so my, my full name is Amponsa Obrema Ekiyoko. Yeah, so popularly known as Obi Amponsa. Yes. All right, all right. So you heard it. I'll repeat it. I I just don't know that. I'll repeat it. So um, we all know Obi as a comedian, but um, some of us also know that he didn't start in that field. He didn't start with that. So we want to ask Obi if you could tell us about your childhood, your schooling, childhood. what you were doing before <laughs> this part of your life. Childhood. Well, uh, I grew up around my parents. My dad is a civil servant, so he traveled a lot. Like government kept posting him to various places in the Brunga half region. So basically we traveled from Wenchi to Kintampo to Drobo to Gosu and then to Insawama and then to Takrade. All this while we were following him. So he realized we couldn't follow him that much, so he sent me to the boarding school in Brekum. So I went to school in Brekum Akap Complex, uh, where I, I schooled basic school and then uh, junior high school. And then I went to Okokuare <coughs> to study science, and then I went to UCC to study optometry. So, well, that's basically a summary of my my childhood with Abby. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think I've heard in one of your interviews talk about how you are bound by, I mean, coming from university of yeah, science yeah, and technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which made you I was bound by a couple of universities. <laughs> I was bound by the School of Physicians and Assistants. I don't know if you've heard it. Is that Kentampo? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I, I applied for pharmacy at KNUSD. I did not get it. I do not know why. I applied for, I think Lego it was a Champions League. I don't know if you know the Champions League. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the where exam. you go do, I think, biological science for a while, yeah. and then you all write some exams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't want to go do that. But when UCC came in for me and it was optometry, they had offered it to me. I was like, I mean, it's the same doctor thing I want to do. So, doctor of optometry, I want to do that. And it was a six year course. So, I was like, yeah. That's something I would like to do, and then I've, I haven't regretted pursuing that as well. Yeah. All right. So, um, did did you ever imagine in your life? I mean, getting involved in in comedy. Did you ever see yourself being a comedian? At least as a student. <laughs> yeah, I did. I actually did. Um, I grew up with a, around a funny dad, so uh, more often than not, I'll be telling jokes he had told us to friends and uh, they were they were funny jokes so i was more of an entertainer sort of guy and i used comedy more of, as a way to comedy was more it was more of a muse for me yes i i used it as a getaway because i was a small boy i was a very young guy and uh, people were picking on me and all that but i used that aspect to to get people to like me more so comedy was more of a, a safe uh, or a respite for me 
yeah so i felt like i mean i didn't think of making a career out of it but i felt like it's something that i would like to keep doing and not stop yeah so i don't i wouldn't say i set out to be a comedian a professional one i would say yeah you know, coming events have their way of there, there's a proverb be like that mm. I, I i don't know that proverb but you know, i'm sure it works yeah. in everyone's life yeah. sometimes you don't really plan coming events cast their shadows or something coming events I'll, ch- I'll check that one please out. check check it all right so um, how do you handle this um, the situation of being rejected? I mean, I'm sure more than two, more than three schools rejecting. <laughs> how did you handle that? Oh, Charlie, it's, it's just a regular, it's a regular life thing, Charlie. Rejection, rejection is part of anything. I was I was so confident I would, one of the schools had applied would accept me. You understand? So when they when UCC came out, in fact, when I went for the school of physicians and surgeons, no, no, not school of physicians. Uh, is it school of um, physicians and surgeons? Assistants, no, oh. physician assistants. Okay. Yeah, at Kentampo, yeah. the interview I really goofed, but I mean, when <laughs> <laughs> and I was told they were they wanted like eighty people, mm-hmm. and we are, we are about five thousand going for the interview. <laughs> Yeah, so when I got there, I was a bit tensed, and everybody outside was tensed. Mm-hmm. And they said they told people who had gone for the interview already that when you come outside, don't tell people the questions they asked you. Okay. And one guy came out to just spill it to all of us. Mm-hmm. So we were going there with ideas of the questions they were going to ask us. Uh, I went there, man. It was it was terrible. It was my first interview, and I, it was a terrible one because I I even forgot my surname <laughs> because I thought my surname was. Coco. Okay. But my dad says my surname was Ampuasa. Was it the night before the no. no. Okay, no. Okay, no. I, I goofed at the interview. I mean, all this while schooling, I thought my surname was Akoko. Okay. Because my dad is Ivan Sako. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. But I get there and they look on my all my certificates and they're like, hello, Mr. Ampuasa. That's your surname, right? I said, no. My surname is Akoko. <laughs> so imagine me going for an interview and having a uh, a banter with the people interviewing me mm-hmm. over my surname. Man. I I realized I had lost it. So the subsequent questions they didn't <laughs> they didn't just work out for me. So I I had applied for a lot of schools and I believed I would get one. So finally when UCC came through, I was like, yeah, that is it. I'm going for that one. I was supposed to go study medicine in Russia. Okay. But we didn't get enough money to take me there. So I I did UCC. All right, that's interesting. But um, so where did this comedy thing get started? Like, when where did you notice that uh, it's like you are doing this, thing, you are really doing it? You know, sometimes you, are, you do something, you are not, you, you are not sure. Sometimes yeah. you are sure that uh, this thing, I see, I'm getting involved. So where did you realize that? You mean like professionally? Yeah, like where professional. I realized I could make money out of it. Okay, so I know for UCC, sometimes they have this um, in house shoes, I mean campus shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever no, see, did you no, start there? No, no. Or where did you start? Uh, I was more fun. Uh, a church boy. I'm. A, I'm not. It's not. I was more. I'm still a church boy. So usually at church events, maybe fundraising and all that, they will invite me to be the MC. And usually when I'm MC, I crack a few jokes and all that. And then when church, uh, you know, freshers come, and then they organize freshers out in, in yeah. and the, the the continuous students who want new girlfriends will join them and all that in the every way. And I'll stand in the car and tell jokes. If we are going from Cape Coast to Izulezu, uh, I'll tell jokes from Cape Coast to Izulezu, and people will be laughing and all that. Coming back, I'll do the same as well. Uh, it was with a, a group of other funny guys. So, a friend of mine realized that, no, we need to make money out of, uh, we need to make something out of what I'm doing because she, and she, everywhere I go, I mention her name, Margaret, Margaret Boyama. Yeah, so she realized it and said, we need to make something out of it. And I was like, yeah, cool. I am, I am game. I would like to. Uh, so they helped me, she and a couple of friends, Bismarck, um, Nibote, they, they helped organize my first show. 
on campus. So that was when I, I mounted the stage to do professional stand up comedy. It was called Wunsile Jai. It was a key comedy style. And I was in level 600 at that, at that time. Yeah, so it started for me at that time when Margaret realized you can make something out of it. And I, I agreed with her. And then we started moving. Today we are here doing the podcast. <laughs> All right. So, um, when at the, at the point Margaret and Bismarck were saying this, how is the feeling like? Did you, you know, sometimes you feel like you want to push back. No, that's relaxed. That's no. Yeah. The, and this, this was a major, a, a major program for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. The, the major conflicting issue was my profession. My, like my future one, I hadn't gotten the the one I hadn't gotten the certificate yet, the mm-hmm. uh, optometrist. Yeah. So I hadn't gotten it. Yet. So it was it was quite conflicting. I mean, anytime you mention to people that you're a comedian and you're an optometrist as well, they they get a bit uh, mm-hmm. confused because there's quite some disconnect. Yeah, doctors are seen as serious people, comedians are seen as serious people. Yeah. So how do you combine <laughs> and all that? So it was that which was conflicting for me but then I I talked to my daddy about it and then he said if that's what I want to do as a career then he's all for it so when my daddy agreed to it and then I did a, a little bit of research and realized that comedians were actually making quite some good money with their uh, their content so you realize that passion starts like passion starts freely mm. You know, you start dishing it out, and then at a point, people realize the value yeah. of what you have, yeah. and then they, they decide to pay for it. So that's how it started for me. So basically, when they when they said that, I was like, I looked at the business part of it and said, okay, then let's do this. Yeah. So was um your friends were they best in managing you, <laughs> or they were they no, they just they take it <laughs> like more like uh for, for couple, you know we we didn't have an auditorium we, we had to go back for an auditorium at ucc called sasakawa mm-hmm. and they gave us some small auditorium they said you would have to leave the chairs it's, it was more like a dining Daniel. kind of room mm-hmm. you know for dinner dinner so they said we can't take the tables out we can't take the chairs out it's a comedy show <laughs> so we had that that uh, problem we had to bring our chairs on the day of the event I had talked to, or my people had talked to my church people, SDA, that they wanted our, our speakers. And then they, some of them had agreed. But finally, when we were going for them, they said the show we were about to do was a secular show. So they were not going to allow us use Christ's machines for, yeah, for comedy. So in the end, it was Gamsu, Ghana Methodist Students Union who they were packing their uh, machines at LLT, large lecture theater at UCC. They were packing their machines for uh, church service the next day. And then we had to beg them to give us more as two speakers. And then they did. Gamsu gave me the speakers when my church people forfeited me. Uh, so uh, we used those speakers. So in the end, we were like, yeah, 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 try. Uh-huh. What cameraman? I still have that video. You should, you should have seen now. My phone. Is there, is there a No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that was way. That was in 2014, I think. Yeah, that was in 2014. So uh, we did that. We did. They were not really managers. They were just people who were uh, who, had to, who had my best interests at hand. Yeah. So that's how it worked out with them. But. Eventually, the program became a success. Uh, we had this guy, some technical guy called Nemo. Uh, he mixed it, the audio and all that, the video, mm-hmm. and then we had CDs out. Oh. Then we were selling for I think, five CDs or some people really enjoyed the show. So we had uh, about two more. When I completed, we came back to do about two more shows on campus. But UCC, it was for Mumpe show. <laughs> So we've, we've relaxed a bit on Keiko's shows. And maybe as things are standing now, maybe they would, they would patronize our shows. Yeah, our shows for yeah so um, for those here in UCC, it's the University of Cape Coast. Yes, it's in Ghana. So that's where he attended for his tertiary or his optometry and his schooling. So um, what was the 
number of people attending your first soon? Well, quite a number. I remember the point of about comedy shows is that, or the point about shows is that, once the auditorium or the venue you choose is filled to the max, you have accomplished what you want. You understand? So if you go for a small auditorium and the people come in their numbers, you have accomplished. Some will go for bigger auditoriums, they won't get enough numbers. Some will go for small auditoriums, they still, still won't get yes. the numbers they, they, they wanted. So for, for us and our first show, we actually had quite a number. And then we had people standing and all that. And when we were even closing, people didn't want us to close. <laughs> That's how good it was on the first night. And so I realized that the the universe actually has something they call beginner's luck. Yes, uh, whatever you decide to do and agree to do, the universe, one, one way or another, combines to help you with that course. And that's called beginner's luck. And it really worked for us. So I was like, then we can, we can make something out of it. Yeah. Well, so... How did your lectures, I mean, see you after that show? Because they expect you to be learning. And, I know, right? You know, um, I mean, medic, those medical allies, yeah, 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 yeah. they expect to be serious learning, yeah. and you are there performing. That's my final year, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had uh, proposals and thesis and all that, too. I had a, uh, you know, my, my supervisor actually got mad at me that I didn't attend his, I didn't invite him. For my show, mm-hmm. and uh, he actually the topic he chose for me. Mm-hmm. In the end, the topic was uh, it was undoable. So I had to find my way out and uh, uh, make up my own topic and give it to him, which he agreed. Mm-hmm. And then after I, had, well, I was done with it, he denied me. Yeah, I mean it was a whole a whole. Uh, compendium of issues <laughs> but in the end he was pissed but in the end we we still were able to graduate i remember i went to submit uh, some of my 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 chapters he threw the book in the oh it was terrible dr elegy it's a nigerian lecture <laughs> yeah, yeah but we're on good terms now i mean uh, eventually it worked out i graduated uh, with my degree uh, and with my career as well, in fact. So, yeah. so I had a few lecturers supporting me as well. The lecturers who buy tickets to come for my shows. Uh, I remember one very supportive lecturer called Dr. Chi. He, he was, I think he's a doctor, doctor now. Mm-hmm. So I had, I had some supporting me. I had some looking at me like an outcast. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, for your supervisor, why, why do you think he was angry? Was it because he didn't get a ticket to the program? I do not know. Oh. I cannot tell his mood. I mean, I can tell for myself, but him, I do not know what was up with him there. But he, sometimes you go to his uh, office and then you have to buy biscuits for his daughter, his little daughter and all that. So there were times that he was in a good mood. There were times he wasn't. Uh, so I, I, I couldn't predict his mood or tell why he was in that kind of mood that time. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, after, I mean, you are, you are done with the first show. How is it feeling like? Did you see yourself doing more shows? Or even like, oh, okay, no, let me finish school first. And, and then let me put this on hold. Or no. there was the edge to do something again. Yeah, there was the edge. There was the edge to to pursue what I had found. Uh, I felt good on stage. I realized that comedy made me happy. While I made people happy as well. So I thought to pursue it. Then I started researching. And then earlier, my comedy, I was doing it just in three. Yeah, so it was called Tree Com- Comedy. Uh, the whole production was called Tree Com Productions, Tree Comedy Productions. And then I came out of school, and I realized those who were actually making it were doing English. Yeah, because the the that that section of incommodes, colors and all that, their time, the slapstick comedy style is gone. Yeah, yeah people don't really uh, lean towards that kind of comedy now. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go with the English. So I, I researched, um, uh, we had, a, during that time, there was a comedy club in Ghana. It was a monthly show called Comedy Bar. 
Yes, so it was handled by James Brown. So the first time I heard they were doing it, I paid and I went to sit there to watch how they are doing it. That time, Chemical came to perform against Dennis DKB, Foster Romanos. I actually thought Foster was just an actor. That's when I realized he was also a stand up comedian. David Oscar, AJZ, Lexi, the comic, Half Co. Cool. There were a couple of funny comedians who came to perform. So after the show, I greeted some of them. David Agla, I greeted them, and then I went back. And then I inboxed the organizer that I wanted to try do open mic. That's how they call it, open mic. And then he said he would give me two minutes to do jokes. I was like, two minutes, yeah. <laughs> Even before I greet, the time, time is up, yeah. yeah. I was like, if it's two minutes and it's going well, he will, yeah. So I went. I, I don't re- really remember what happened the first day. But I, it, I, probably, I think it probably went well or I bombed, I don't know. But then gradually, we kept performing, we kept performing. And then, yeah, so that was it. That was how the... Uh, I didn't give, I didn't just stop mm. after school. I decided to pursue it. And this was during national service, what I'm talking about. I was doing service or let me say internship at uh, the Saom Government Hospital. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that means you, for some of the well-known um, comedians now, you were sitting when they were performing. Oh yeah. So you are not, you are not, you can't, you couldn't match yourself to them. After, no, no, after no, no, no. After that time, I didn't know comedy. Comedy, comedy is very intricate. If you, if you want to do comedy, you'd have to read, watch, write rewrite, learn, unlearn a lot of things because people have a variety of moods, especially in these conditions we are in now. People are quite sensitive to certain stuff, so you need to be very, uh, very measured in the in the things you say to people to make them laugh. You understand? So comedy is not just comedy that anybody can just start. So I decided to study it. And that is what led me to pay the tickets, pay for tickets. I even went with a date, pay for tickets, sit down, and then I enjoyed myself that night. I laughed because they were really funny. I was like, this is what I want to do. So, yeah, you look at them. I looked at them during that time. They were, they were my bosses now. <laughs> now they are my friends. Yeah. Mm. Is it, is it, I mean, what gave you the sense of discipline? to go and watch somebody learn from them. You know, sometimes as young people, there's this edge like that as far as I have achieved some success, ah, mm. I know I can do it. Why should I go and sit yeah, at someone's feet? I problem. mean, what, what brought the discipline to go there and listen to, yeah, or enjoy their comedy, mm. study their comedy by me? Yeah, I think <laughs> I wanted to see how it was done. I'd watch them on TV. I'd watch them on, uh, I think, Citizen Coffee. He was organizing, he had this two weeks comedy show he did, and it was, it was on TV. Okay. Yeah. So I'd watch them, I'm like, yeah, I have jokes like this. So the first day, uh, what made me buy tickets to go watch was that I wanted to know how it feels. I wanted to be part of the audience. I wanted to see how jokes are shared and how I would relate to the jokes. You understand? And how they deliver. Comedy is about delivery, audience relatability, um, performance composure. So I looked at all that, their actions on stage and all that, and I was like, okay, so this is how it's done. And even on the first day, I don't think I did really well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, you have to pass through the mail before you come out as a as a great person mm-hmm. there are few people who blow okay. on the first try there are others who need to go through the mail and i i am I'm more of a the process i trust the process i trust going through that mail more than uh, just blowing out of the water and then you'd, you'd find yourself wanting when you are in certain situations yeah so I believed in that training process that I studied from people it wasn't just, just them I was watching the, that time when I was doing my national service my supervisor actually was also a fan of comedy so he had Dev Jam comedy uh, Dev Jam was a show that blacks 
had on their own. Because you know, back in the day, blacks were not really having their freedom. Yeah. So Dev Jam was more of a black comedy session. Dev Dev Jam Dev Comedy Jam, yeah. And so I had their 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 CDs. Yeah, no, no, yeah. their their videos. Okay. Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, uh, Benny Mark. Yeah. So I was watching them as well as watching my fellow people. Wow. Yeah. So like I told you earlier, comedy, everything, not just comedy, everything you decide to do, you need to research and then learn and then know about it so that when you are asked about it, you are not found wanting. Yeah. That, that's great. So, um, let me get back to your childhood. What did you think you would have become, I mean, at age 6 to, let's say, 6 to 15? What did you oh, want to be in future? To be a doctor. I mean, basically every every parent's dream <laughs> for their son or daughter. They pick you up, hey, you be a doctor, hey, you know, so that, that was what was in my head. But uh, when I went to, uh, when after my BC, I chose Opokuare, Kumasi Academy, and I didn't know Accra. I grew up in the Bronga Half region, so my Accra was Kumasi. So I didn't know many of the schools. So I chose Opokuare as I thought I knew I'd get to Opokuare. Okay. But when I got to Opokuare, I, I was offered um, general arts. Okay. And uh, I didn't want to do it, but I went for, but I had been offered and admitted. So uh, when I went for the medicals, I entered the doctor's office and then the air condition that hit me, I came out and said, no, 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 I want to do science. So they had to, you know, do some connections for me too. (laughs) Yeah, so, I mean, when I started out, I wanted to be a doctor and that's what, Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I aim towards achieving. All right. So um, this I don't know how this may sound, but in your CVs, let's say um after after your service national service, mm. that is all. Did you add anything like comedy to your CV? <laughs> no, no, no. My CV is for to be employed at a, an IQ. What are they using? Uh, how would I say? And I'm a, I'm also a comedian in the evening. <laughs> Why would they need that information? <laughs> some, some actually, I mean, now some know me. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't necessarily have to include, uh, include it into CV. my CV. Yes, some, which I wouldn't include optometry unless I'm, I'm filling a CV for uh, that kind of purpose. You understand? Like when I was built to perform in Nigeria, uh, I had to submit something like that. So that basket mouth looks at it and say, Oh, well, he's performed here, he's done this, he's done this, okay. You'll put him on the show. Yeah. All right. I, 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 I look as if you are going ahead of me. But that basket mouth, we should go, we'll discuss it later. But before that, and so as an optometrist, uh, how did you get your first job after service? Mm-hmm. What did you entail? My first job after service, after national service, uh, it takes a while for the posting to come. So uh, we call something local. And during your serv- during your internship, actually, you'd, you'd be writing a couple of licensure exams. So during internship, we're learning towards that, so that you pass and that you be a licensed optometrist. Yeah. So afterwards, after we had the license, we're giving provisional license during the induction. But after we had the main license, we're now doing locums. Uh, locums are private, uh, part-time doctor jobs or nurse jobs. It's, in the, it's a, a time in the health service. So I was with Gokals, yeah, I think. I was with Gokals Opticals at uh, Accra Central. And then I was working with Del Cielo as well at Kaswa. And yeah. Yeah, so after service, that was it for me. After service, I wasn't redundant. I was still working. Because our job... Uh, our job will be the kind of job that you would have to go searching so much. There are hospitals, there are clinics, there are patients ready. It's a professional course, so there are people ready for to be attended to. Yeah. So I didn't really suffer getting that. But then finally, I went to work at Wadbog Eye Clinic at Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. So, um. 
at the moment where I mean, the, I mean the light, the spotlight was coming on you. Mm. I believe you are still working at Insawa. Yeah. Yeah. Ewutu Beko Insawa. Ewutu Beko. Ewutu Beko. So you are still working at Ewutu Beko. Um, how was it? Seeing patients and see like, ah, this comedian is coming to check up on me. I mean, I'm a patient to this comedian. Am I safe? How is that? <laughs> well, uh, like I told you earlier, comedy and I, I care are different. Yes. So when we, when we are in the consulting room, I'm a different person. Okay. Yes. So uh, unless the patient needs that kind of care, that a patient maybe has lost uh, the the nerve damage is so extensive that the the vision cannot be recovered. In such patients, sometimes they just come to hear the doctor's voice and to get some care and attention. So such patients, you know, you can work with them along that side. And there are patients who come and they will look at you and like, ah, this, uh, maybe some of them would wait to, for you to finish attending to them. Say, are you? Sometimes I say, no, no, I'm, I'm not the one. I'm, I'm, I'm a twin or something. They say, no, they take out their, their phones, play the video, and it's quite awkward. <laughs> Listening to yourself. Nah, it's quite awkward, but I don't get that often because where I work, uh, it's more like in a rural, rural area, yeah. So the people who come are not too social media uh, oriented. Yeah, oriented, unless it's a, a parent who comes with a, a daughter or son, you know, a young one, then they, they do that, yeah. But it doesn't conflict anyway, it doesn't conflict, it, it does not. Okay, so um, I think in 2019 uh, you were listed on Basket Mouse, Lord of the Rips. Um, how did you get that? Let me hear, yeah, how did you get that? How did I get that yes, platform how you, to perform? Yes. Well, I, I, I do not know what I did. I think I kept working. Okay. If there's one thing I believe and one thing I've learned in life, is that you control what you can and then leave what you cannot to fit. So I kept working, and uh, these people who contact, these people who organize international shows, they have clocks in the country. They have people they contact, okay. connect. So they, they, maybe basket will contact someone and say, oh, Charlie, I want a comedian from Ghana I want to, uh, I'd like to put on. They say, oh, we have, there's this guy, who be So somebody who saw my works, uh, there's this man called Nabil Alasa. He works with a, a com- event company called Event Factory. So uh, he recommended me to Basket. In fact, he saw me one day and said, he's working on a show with Basket, so I should just keep my fingers crossed. Okay. So I was really looking forward to that. I remember I remember the day I saw the flyers coming out. And then I texted him and asked him, Charlie, boss, what's up? <laughs> and then I, I'm fine. I... I there was like, you wait, let's see, let's see. He's releasing the one, one, one. Okay. And then finally, he, ha- he he released my, he said I, I was confirmed. I was with MTN staff at a program at Maha. Okay. He went for a staff retreat. Okay. The joy I had in me when I saw that flyer, <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Because yeah. I had prepared for them. Wow. Yeah. I had prepared for them. Before the confirmation before, came in. Before I was, I was told say I should prepare for a show like that. You are just with I, I am I am ready with me. I'm <laughs> I've prepared for I, I always tell people people think I'm, I'm I'm bragging or something, but I've prepared for Americans got talent. I've prepared for wow. British got talent. Wow. I've prepared for Kenya shoes. <laughs> wow. I've, I've shoes. It's all about being prepared because okay. there's a popular saying opportunity is when something something Preparing meets yeah. um, um, no, lack lack um, I'll, I'll get I'll get that yeah, no, something like something. that when opportunity meets uh, preparation mm-hmm. that is lack mm-hmm. uh, I think that's it opportunity so, meets preparation yeah, yeah. Okay. so uh, yeah that's what happened with basket mass show and after after that and that is life like I told you you work hard you work at something the universe will help you achieve it after that there on that evening uh, one other guy contacted me that he would be organizing another show you need me it, was, it wasn't just me who went I went with Jacinta okay yeah, yeah. Jacinta we'd be needing us on the the next 
program he would be organizing. We're like, cool. The next year, January, he called us. That was January 2020. He called us to perform at the African Magic uh, oh, Comedy oh. Nights, which we also went to spoil there. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's been a... It's been a matter of preparation and then God and then uh, good luck, yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I, I've not watched the African Magic one, but I watched The Lord of the Rips and yeah. Pats. And I, 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 I thought maybe because of the kind of audience you had at that time, it might, it might not flow with our usual ones you give us here, I mean the Ghanaian ones. Yeah. But I realized it was a different one and Maybe I'm, I could be wrong, but I saw the more of audience relativity. Is yeah. it because you, you work there really well there? I, I, I noticed that. Yeah. And how was it like meeting a new audience? Yeah. I know you have prepared already, but how was that? It was a challenge. Mm-hmm. It was a very big challenge for me. Uh, for me, it was my biggest platform as a comedian so far. So when I was offered that, when I went on stage, Nigerians can. can can form. Let me say that the stage was mm-hmm. was even bigger than the VGMA stage. It was big. Like wow. it had the LED. <laughs> if you look on your right, people are sitting. Left people are sitting <laughs> in front of you. A crowd. And so I I realized this the comedy is about relatability. Yeah. As long as your audience are able to understand what you're saying and it's funny, they will laugh. Mm-hmm. So I realized. Uh, uh, that time they had just finished with Big Brother Niger, mm-hmm. and Nigerians really are religious about Big Brother yeah, Niger when it comes to Big Brother Niger. So I found some uh, very how do you say it very common, yeah, mm-hmm. common phrase that happened with the contestants and the, the popular ones. Okay, and then I used that as an intro, and then it worked. And I said, ah, here we go. Then I went into my session using Nigerian examples. Some jokes that I end with Ghanaian examples, I replaced it with um, Nigerian. Nigerian characters. And then in the end, it really worked out well. I mean, the videos are on YouTube, so it's, it worked out fine. In fact, Nigerians are quite a good crowd. <laughs> they are they are very welcoming as well. Okay. And they force their way through things when they want it. Wow. Because there was this guy who never knew me, mm-hmm. the guy who covered the video mm-hmm. actually contacted me immediately so I was booked and said he would like to be my video man. Uh, I never knew him anyway. So he met me at the airport, we met, we went together and, and all that, two pictures of me. <laughs> so in the end, before I went on stage, he mic'd me. He put a mic on me and then he was downstairs getting the coverage. Wow. Yeah, that's how people were. People are working hard. So if you dig on that before that, like before you even go on the stage to you know who's shooting, he yeah, has taken he the, has taken in the role already. If Basket Mouth didn't give me my video, he had it. Wow. And Canadians always need proof of payment. <laughs> proof of <laughs> proof of work. Yes. So oh I went to Nigeria to perform. Where is your work? Wow. You understand? Because up till now I haven't had the work. If like Basket Mouth was supposed to give it to me. You understand? So that guy. Okay, so he he, he had the video for yeah, you personally. Did the co- yeah, he did for wow. me and Jacinta as well. Wow. Yeah, that's how people work. So wow. I believe I believe in taking opportunities. He did that. Okay. And really, he I asked him what it was in it for him, and then he said nothing. He wants to get closer to the big guys in Nigeria. He wants to use that style to enter, and it worked for him. And he was truthful to tell you that. Yeah. That's, that's life. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I know of a few Nigerians who always um, talk about, even this week, it was on Twitter that um, Ghanaians are not ambitious. That concern was raised. Yeah. Ghanaians, yeah, we, we were talking about startups, so maybe it was sided. But for me, I felt like, I told the president that it was more cultural, I mean, generally. I think we were brought up not to be, we were brought up to be a bit timid mm-hmm. and then uh, to be laid back and not question. Okay. And not for many me, for many me, you know, give it to God. I mean, mm-hmm. if you don't understand something, it's yes, okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Nigerians, do have that section of Nigerians as well, but they have the. You the, want it? I'm going yeah, for it. I want it, and I'll go for it. Wow. Nigeria will see you with your girlfriend. Call the girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can we see you there? Yeah, it's boss, boss, ma, ma, talk to your woman. <laughs> and they will do that. 
I believe in uh, that is one thing I like about them. Their tenacity. Yeah. And how they go for what they want. Mm-hmm. If you all had that in us, Charlie, mm-hmm. you should see you, many sports people. Mm-hmm. Yannis Antetokounmpo, uh, the the guy who in was basketball. MVP twice. Yeah. It's Nigeria. Yeah. Oladipo, Victor Oladipo, basketball, Nigeria. Nigerians are scattered yeah. all over yeah. because they push. Yeah. You understand? It's just that. The Africans and our leaders don't really help us, even when you want to work so hard. Yeah. So it's 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 more like a, a bottleneck in their progress. Yeah. Wow. So I think for my Nigerian listeners, um, you have heard it for yourself. Yeah, Nigerians. But I think it's also an advice for we the Ghanaian. We have, we have a few Ghanaians like that. So, so, I, I, it's not, I think we are not, we are not, not, too, many. We are not many. And, and when they do that, we say they are too <laughs> overconfident. Exactly. They are, they are rude. They are, they are rude. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. give pressure. Yeah. They yeah. don't respect post time. And yeah. All these things. But those people are the ones making it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think sometimes this brings me to the concern of thinking that sometimes people who achieve things are sometimes considered an extremist. Yeah. Because those... sometimes if, yeah, mm-hmm. because now how it how it looks now, everybody wants to pursue something. So maybe there are two women in one house. <laughs> one starts selling indomie. Mm-hmm. The other one will also start selling the same indomie. Okay. A one bread cake. Before we knew the more than five. Exactly. And in crap pie. Yeah. Before we knew was different price. Yeah. So once you start something, people will try to emulate it and maybe do it a lot better than you. Yeah. And that is why Mark Zuckerberg bought WhatsApp. <laughs> that is why he bought Instagram. Yeah. When he realized, no, these are my Where competitors. Yeah. Let me just clear them out of the system. Wow. You understand? Yeah. So if you if you don't grow, if you do not evolve, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, if you don't evolve, oh yeah. Take yeah, the survival of the fittest used to be about animals eating each other. Mm-hmm. Now it's about <laughs> us using our our, our, our prowess uh, to beat each other. Wow. Yeah, so if we, if we relax more, if we relax too much, people will take over. Wow. So <laughs> this gets me wondering as well. So why did it incra- why didn't it incra- by try get the other people coming up? Rather than yeah, I mean, it, they, they wouldn't <laughs> think of it. They wouldn't. I mean, why would Vortic wait for these people to come? Well, and uh, adulterate the market. Yeah. Vortic, Belacqua, you know, wait what, they saw them come. Then nine, all the other people. Ideal milk saw cowbell come. <laughs> In fact, people were laughing at cowbell that a uh, year for. Powder, powder because yeah. it was sachet. Yeah. But what we knew was the thing. <laughs> yeah. And then they said we have our market. Wow. And then they targeted these people. Mm-hmm. And so if if a hundred thousand people buy one CD <laughs> of uh, a sachet, yeah, that's hundred thousand revenue. Yeah. You understand? And these people cannot afford maybe the five CDs. The five CDs. Big can, you yeah. understand? Yeah. So it's all about <laughs> thinking smart and acting smart. Yeah. Now, Paddy, how it is that if you do not work harder, people will overtake you in every industry. Wow. Wow. So, uh, I, I mean, this didn't, we, I mean, we didn't, uh, this was not part of our conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a good place for us to talk about where young people, um, instead of, um, from Africa, I mean, Africans are from mm-hmm. um, Africans all over the world, um, try getting that. Um, tenacity to ag- ag- yeah. ag- aggressiveness to Aggression. go for things. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things is we have laid back and thought, well, maybe because of colonialism, because of our yeah, forefathers, so, they say, yeah. so what at all can we go for? I mean, so what's the advice on that generally for you I from think, your experience? I think if you want something, go for it. Mm-hmm. It's the reason a lot of beautiful ladies are single now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. When you ask them, eh, when you ask them, they say they are not approached by guys. Okay. And when you ask guys, they say they are intimidated by them. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So if, but they want them. Mm-hmm. If you want something, go for it. Yeah. There are stumbling blocks you will face. Yeah. There are, there are people who will dissuade you. Yeah. Now, uh, you, you think you go to do this thing. People who would, and in the end, when you are successful, these people will say they know you. They know you. <laughs> <laughs> they know you. They will surely know you. Yeah. yeah. And for what I've realized with us mm-hmm. is that we do not have patience. Okay. So when we tap this small a year, and then it's not working, Just you want to move to, to another. We forget that everything you have to go through. Some mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, 
I'm I'm a basketball oh, fan. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you share a lot. Of yeah. So Michael Jordan, when he was recruited, uh, when he was drafted, mm-hmm. I think 1984, mm-hmm. he never won a championship till 1990. Wow. So imagine six this. years. Yeah. And people saw him as a big prospect. Wow. Michael, Michael, not Jordan. He should win something. For six years. Yeah. And then yeah. 1990, 91, mm-hmm. uh, he won for three consecutives. And then uh, they, I think they had a break. And then he came back for one three more. Wow. That was because he had passed through that growth process. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, my voice. Sure. Yeah. He had passed through that growth process. And we all need to go through that process. You all need to go through that meal so that you face uh, disappointments. I have faced a lot of disappointments. I am actually of the opinion that me and Drew, I haven't gotten to where I want to get. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I want to sell out MSG like Trevor <laughs> has done. Wow. Oh, yeah, he sold out Madison Square Garden. That, mm. is, that is the ultimate. Wow. Apollo, uh, Apollo. Yeah. yeah. Land O2 Arena, hmm. all those, those those are places we aim at performing. Yeah. So set the aim high and then work towards it. You understand? The more you keep working, the more you get there. I faced a big blow in my career on 1022 laughs. I was performing and nobody was laughing at my jokes at conference center. Wow. They were just looking at me like, what is this guy doing? And then I kept talking and then I finished it and I left it. It was terrible. Wow. It was terrible. The newspapers, the radio stations blasted me. I always quit. Wow. But then I learned a very valuable lesson. And that was that failure is always part of the journey. Once you learn to deal with that, nothing else can push you down. Failure. When you fail, you rise. You are excellent, you continue. You understand? So if you're not able to deal with your failures, then you're not ready for the the fight. Hmm. Wow. I mean, uh, for for people like you, we would never assume you could be failing even at that at that at that level because one of the things i've been amazed by your career p- p- to, um, to let you know i'm a comedian fan like oh, okay okay ac- yeah. across africa across yeah, the world yeah, I'm, I'm a comedian fan ah. sometimes i feel like it may be this i can do but i'm, I'm not interested <laughs> now <laughs> not that but i realized you you are able to um, perf- um perform to different groups of people mm. and the um, club hundred group was the another amazing yeah, group was, for me that's a tough group like Performing to that group and the situations, the scenarios you created, I was as well with the election results yeah, at that time, you know. and I, I was amazed. Like you use the word, even if, I mean, those they laugh, you meet the president. Yeah, yeah, they, I saw him. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they laugh at at that, and there were other. I mean, the yeah, there were the That's so nice. I mean, how how did you get? A, a good um, context, a good uh, content for them. By working, okay. by working. Those contents that you see us seeing on stage, those 10 minutes, 15 minutes content, are work that we've put in for about two, three years. Um, we, we, we hone our, our skill, we hone our talent on small platforms. Okay. So if I see a big a joke on a big platform, it's because I've tried it on a smaller platform and it worked. Okay. Yeah, so we do comedy class, we do small, small shows. Here where there's a show at Osu, then oh, yeah. we go, we perform. These 15 people, 50 people, 100 people who are there laugh at the jokes. You're like, okay, this one fa- uh, flew, this one didn't, so I'll cancel this, I'll keep this. Yeah. So that when I get <laughs> the president and this is the Yeah, the Ghanaians. Yeah, 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 so when yeah, I get this, do you understand? Exactly. So it's about honing your skill. Mm. Yeah, and rehearsing, writing, and rehearsing. All right, so um, I, I was I was at your show in Kumasi last year, oh. um, the one with uh, the Orange. Nineteenth December. Nineteen uh, was it? Nineteenth December. This is a kind of comedy fest. No, no, not this year. I mean last. Last year. In last. December. It should be last two years. Last okay, two years okay. with um, Orange FM. It was it, it happened uh, at the park. No, in this hotel. There's Mickey. this popular. Is it McLean? No, is it Fiesta or something? It's a bigger hotel in Kumasi. Mm. It was done on a on a on a, on a ground, a garden ground, and let's forget the contest. But I remember I remember how you I, you linked what with the Americans. I mean, those in Kumasi. Yeah, I, yeah. 
I I also feel like hey you you got the right jokes for them in the typical um she jokes. Ah, uh, Maz is the the best place for a, a Ghanaian comic. Wow. Yeah, because the punchlines are very funny when it's in she. Okay. More often than not, you have to convert your punchlines from she to English. Mm-hmm. You understand? So, Maz is like a holy grail mm-hmm. where we go and then we, we actually we relax yeah, and give them yeah because they love jokes and they can take jokes okay <laughs> yes you can okay. tell a commercy person and they know it's what they do, they do. Yeah. yeah it's just a problem with how sensitive we have become as a, a nation mm-hmm. so some people cannot laugh at some jokes but <laughs> would laugh at some other jokes that it is what it is <laughs> all right so uh, talking about some food for this session let's Let's end with um, your aspirations for the future. I've 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 read Trevor Noah's books. Mm-hmm. I've, I've watched, read it as well. You've read it as well. I've watched his comedy. Mm-hmm. I've listened to how he even got to um, hosting the um, the Daily Show, mm-hmm. the Daily Morning Show, mm-hmm. Daily Show. With with such a dream, with such um, a future ahead, which you ascribe to that you want to get to that level. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things you are doing now? And the reason I'm asking this question is that there are people or younger ones who are who have been gotten to your stage, and they're also doing certain things yeah. at that point. Yeah. So what are the things you maybe you did and you are doing now, and you encourage them to do it? And yeah, because in yeah, that. Yeah, me, I am a, an ardent believer in God, okay. so I believe God uh, has an influence in everything we do. Yes. That aside, I'm also an ardent believer in hard work. And putting in the work whatever you want to accomplish if you don't work for it you won't get it and when you get it and then you feel lazy you lose it so and that's and then uh, humility because you cannot progress alone in life there are people that you meet who may be your helpers but your attitude may throw them off so being humble doesn't mean you are you are you are laying on the ground for them to step on you but it means you acknowledge that you are not alone in this world. There are other factions in the world. So those, those are what I, I, I ascribe to. Uh, working hard, trusting in God, and then being humble. In the end, uh, nature takes its course. When you work hard and uh, try to be the best at what you do, in the end, God helps you out. Yeah, the platforms would open, you wouldn't be expecting it. People would be calling you who you thought wouldn't have your numbers. Yeah, and you'd realize that it's not by your own doing. So be nice to people. Be nice, be nice to people. Older people, younger people, madmen, beggars, rich people. Be nice to every attitude you show to people matters. And then keep working hard. Uh, never be this, uh, disappointed. I mean, even when you're disappointed, work towards achieving the best for yourself. In the end, God comes through for everybody. Yeah, so um, where can people follow you? And this is being cash so don't worry, <laughs> watch out for the next one. But where can people follow um, you? Where can people reach you? Yeah, um, follow me. I'm at. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> social media. Yeah, social media. Uh, my, my, I'm Obi underscore Amponsa on uh, Instagram. Okay. And uh, Obi Amponsa underscore. I mean, just type Obi Amponsa. The one with the the larger followers. The one with the, <laughs> with the K. With the K. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I'm on Facebook as well as Obi Amponsa as well. And uh, yeah, basically that is it. And, we are still working, so just keep praying for us and then keep working hard as well. All right, so um, I just finished with Ubi. It was nice having you, Ubi. Thank you so much for making it possible. And I'll be looking for, for the second, the second issue. I think there are lots to talk about. Mm-hmm. And thank you for opening up on that. Yes. Thank you for having me as well. God bless you. Hey guys, thank you for listening to this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. We promise to bring you new episodes weekly. Subscribe on the various platform you listen to this podcast on. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at The Young and Old, and on YouTube 
at the Young and Old Podcasts.